Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just take your seats. Amen. God is a good God. God is a good God. We are going to continue from where we stopped last Sunday, but in a different dimension. We are dealing with the world of the word. Praise the Lord. The world where the word of the Lord is king. <laughs> where the word of the Lord rules. Many of us don't understand that when we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of the Son of God, that many things changes. Amen? The word rules in the kingdom of light. In the kingdom of his dear son, the word rules. Praise the Lord. And that is why it is called the world of the word. It is the world where the word of God creates. The word of God gives life. The word of God gives hope. Amen. God brought everything that is in the universe into beings with words. Everything. Looking at Genesis chapter 1. And then you read through to chapter 2. You see that all creation was powered by the word. Amen. If you remember, just those little three words. God said, let there be. And God said, and God said, let there be. God said, let there be. He didn't say that God went to work. He didn't say that God was carrying bulldozers and building and building and building. He says, and God said, let there be. And there was. Firmament, light. Are you hearing me? Everything you can think about. Everything, it came into existence by the power of the word. Not only that, the Bible said also that God sustains everything by the power of his word. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. It talks about sustainability. God didn't just create by the word, but God sustains by the word. Praise the Lord. He sustains by his word. Meaning that Creativity came by the word. Sustainability also came by the word. What a wonder. What a wonder. Amen. Say the word is powerful. Say the word is awesome. If we understand that the word plays such a role in the kingdom of light, why are we careless with our words? Hebrews 11 verse 3. By faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that the things that are seen are not made of things that do appear. The things we see is not made by the construction equipment and construction material. It is creation by the word. Praise the Lord. And so in the kingdom of his dear son, the word is agent of creation. The word is the agent of sustainability. And because the Bible said as he is, so are we. It means that when we come into the kingdom, automatically our word is enabled either to create, either to build, or to destroy. And therefore, by any way we speak our word, it will deliver whatever we say. It will deliver. And yet people treat their word with carelessness. People speak carefully. Are you hearing me? You don't know what power is in the world, in the kingdom of light. You don't get it. Amen? You don't get it. Many people, their condition today is not by the devil. It's by their word. Many homes today, many marriages today are broken not by the devil but by the prophetic utterance from those in the marriage. Many businesses are broken today, not because business was bad, but because of the prophets that were in charge of the business. Many children today 
are wayward not because they were not intelligent but because of the prophets and the prophetess that raised them many destinies are compromised not because of the devil not because of the devil but because of the carelessness and the utterances of those even when the bible makes it clear he said let you know corrupt communication don't let it proceed out of your mouth don't let it proceed out of your mouth because he said if you are willing and obedient we eat the good of the land but if you will rebel and disobey god he said you'll be devoured by the sword what type of sword it is the sword of the tongue what do you think that is needed in the kingdom of light what do you think is needed the bible said by strength shall no might prevail and so in this kingdom your ability your qualification <laughs> your nationality it will not take you anywhere are you hearing me in the world of the world <laughs> what determines your destiny is the utterances that comes from your spirit and yet and yet many speak careless things praise the lord all the business the world ever did was with words are you hearing me what is microsoft what is computing no what is it is it not the business of the world i'm asking you what is it no what's the meaning of it what's the meaning of it come on you should know what's it information what is information information is what what is programming isn't it amazing that the world are profiting from the world and the believers are not profiting from the world the richest men on planet earth now are the product of the world and therefore the poorest people on planet earth also are the product of the world europe asia the advanced country they have found a way to maximize profit with the word are you hearing me with the word what have we done about the word no we have not done much businesses of the world powered by the word oh the most beautiful relationships are built with the word many don't know it that love is generated by word no 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 you don't get it you don't get it love is generated by the word are you hearing me and also hearts are crushed by word hearts are crushed amen with with sense feel word you destroy lives when you speak what you feel when you speak how you feel you first destroy yourself and then when you speak it to others sense feed word sense feed word then you affect the faith of others but with god filled words but with god filled words what do you do you build one another up you transform situation say to the righteous it is well it doesn't matter what you are feeling it doesn't matter what you are going through the bible says, say to the righteous say to the righteous it is well praise the lord no matter your situation the bible says say to the righteous it is well don't tell me it is well can't you see my condition what should i tell you it is not well should i tell you it is not well then how will you recover your recovery is not your ability your recovery is in the word that is sent to you he sent the word and the word healed them are you hearing me and delivered them from their destruction what did god send an angel no 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 sir no man in their trouble when they cried unto the lord what did god send to them no what did god send to them the bible said he sent his word his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction what do you want 
He said, don't speak to me. This is not a time for word. This is a time for money. Are you hearing? What is money? Money is paper. The word will do more than money to those that know how to use it. Amen. Money will run out. Money is limited. But the word is unlimited. Are you hearing me? The word is what? Unlimited. The word is able to produce more money than your ability can produce. In the world of the word, the right kind of word is the most important thing. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 6 verse 63, Jesus said it is the spirit who gives life. The spirit that gives life. Praise the Lord. But the flesh profits nothing. So all your ability, all your ability, all your effort, he said it profits nothing. Imagine, it profits nothing. He said the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. A, the words of God, they are what? They are spirit and they are life. The words, anywhere you hear the word of God, it will give you life. It will minister life to you. There is no occasion where the word of God will come to you and it will not minister to you, except if you are not born again. Praise the Lord. Like I said in the morning, Enoch was watching something last night. Amen. And what he was watching was David and Goliath. And mommy and I were just there watching with him. Even though it was cartoon, but the word of God is not a cartoon. Are you hearing me? The cartoon is on the graphics. Just to entice the children. But the word of God cannot be cartoonized. Are you hearing me? It's the same word that will be spoken in real movie. It's the same word that is spoken in cartoon. It's just a caricature that is different. But you see, listening to the word of Samuel in that cartoon unto Saul, it had the same impact on me anyway. As if I'm just reading it. Amen. And so you see, the word of God, it carries the same power through any medium, through any channel. The word of God. But there are people that say there's a children cartoon, and yet they will not know what is in the children cartoon. No, are you hearing me? The word of God is unlimited. The word of God cannot be hindered. Whatever it is programmed to do, whatever that is destined to do, God said, my word will not return back to me void. It will perform. It will deliver. Amen. Amen. Please, you need to know, in the kingdom of the word, the word is king. In the kingdom of the word, the word is what? And very often, people are careless in this kingdom because they don't know. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and are life. The word. They are spirit, they are life. The words that I speak to you. And so what do you speak also? In James chapter 3, verse 2, James talking about the power of words. He says, we all stumble in many ways. James chapter 3, verse 2. He said, we all miss it in many ways. Ah, Anyone who is never at fault in what they say, this is NIV. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. Ah. James said, we stumble in many things, in many ways. We make mistakes, we fail in many things, in many ways. But there is one way that is extraordinary. There is one way that is unique. There is one way that is extraordinary. That way is the way of the word. He said, if you are not at fault, if you are not at fault in what you say, if you don't stumble in what you say, the Bible qualifies you as perfect or mature. And so, mature people don't miss it with their words. They are careful with their words. Because to talk about perfection, it's not just that you don't make mistakes. No, the perfection, the word there, is about being matured in your words and how you speak and what you speak. It's not just what you say. It is how you say it. Praise the Lord. It's not just what you say. It is in how you say it. What does your word do? I just told you. With words, we can build comfort. You can't give anybody comfort. You can give money. 
But real comfort, you cannot buy it, can you? No. But you can speak comfort to somebody's heart. You can speak peace to somebody's heart. You can speak encouragement to somebody. Word. Words generate comfort. Words generate peace. Words generate ah, healing, deliverance. Shout hallelujah. James said, if anyone, anyone, if you don't miss it with your word, if you don't make mistakes with your word, you know, some people say, but I said sorry. How many times will you say sorry? How many times will you miss it? No. 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 Do unto others as you like others to do unto you. Talk to others the way you like to be talked to. Many people dish out what they cannot take. That's the sad thing. They dish it out by virtue of position, by virtue of advancement, by virtue of age. Listen, age does not authorize you to speak careless words. No! Do you know that in the kingdom of God, age is not recognized? How are you going to measure your age with somebody that's ageless? With God, God is ageless. And so you stand before God and say, Lord, you know, you know, Lord, I am 90 years, Lord. The, 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 should, the church should treat me as an elder. And the Lord said, how many years? You say, I'm, you know, Lord, you know, 90 the Lord said, okay, maybe that is, sus. that is filling your mind and your heart. Tomorrow, you will be no more. You will not be 91. And so, you, you go. Amen. When Paul said, we know no man after the flesh. What are he talking about? In Christ Jesus, your physical age means nothing. It means not. It's valueless. And yet with the world it is important. But with the kingdom. No. Your natural age. Listen. Your natural age is irrelevant. And that is why people run into trouble in the church. They come to church because of. They say. As an elder. They should respect elders because of age. Listen. Elders are not known by gray hair. But with wise words. Do you understand me? In this kingdom, it is the word that dominates. What are you able to do with the word? You know, I remember one distant pastor Chris shared with us many years ago. He said one time he was sick and they took him to the hospital. And when they took him, everybody tried to make him say that he was sick. He refused. Yes, but he was in the hospital. But he refused to allow his present condition to make him speak what he is not. Praise the Lord. The fact that your temperature is high does not mean you are sick. Are you hearing me? The fact that you are running stomach does not mean that you are sick. The fact that your leg is paining you does not mean that you are sick. Listen, if somebody knock you and doubt, does not mean that the person visited you. Are you hearing me? Somebody knocks on your door and you open and you stood by your door and said, what do you want? He said, I'm selling um, cutleries. I would like to say cutleries. He said, no, I'm not interested. And he said, but you need to look at it. This is original. He said, I'm not interested. He said, I will give you, I will give you discount. He said, I'm not interested. He said, I will give you credit. He said, I'm not interested. What is he doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing? What is he doing? He is trying to push something to you. You are resisting him, praise the Lord. He is speaking words to encourage you, to entice you. You are speaking words to rebuff him. He is the same thing in the realm of the spirit. Devil knocks on your door with fever. He said, I'm not taking. He said, what about if you just take a small headache? He said, I'm not taking. What about small temperature? I'm not taking. What about small pain? I'm not taking. Okay. 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 You know what? Let me give you a small feeling of feet. You know, you, 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 you won't have tem high temperature. You can have, I don't know what the names for this thing. You can have small temperature. He said, I'm not taking. Praise the Lord. And the more he tried to market to you, 
the more you resist him. You know what the devil is trying to do? The devil is getting you to just show interest, show interest, show interest, show interest. By the time you show interest, you said, okay, 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 okay. okay. You, you said to the cell man, okay, you can come in only for five minutes. You already know he has made a cell. Five minutes! He knows they have warned you. As he comes in, he will not go until you buy something. Amen. And that's why the Bible says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Devil may not speak audibly, but you need to speak audibly to shut him up. Devil may speak through feelings, but you need to speak loudly to shut him up. Do you get what I'm talking about? In the world of the word, the word is king. The word rules. The word is a decider. If any man does not if anyone does not stumble in word, if any man does not fail in words, the same is perfect. What do you say? No. In Mark, the Bible said that Jesus said the word is a seed. The word is what? A seed. You plant it when you speak it. It will produce. Every seed will grow. Are you hearing me? Every seed we grow. You'll be surprised how many poor people you created with your words. No, 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 no. You'll be surprised. On the judgment day, you'll be surprised how many hearts you destroyed because of your word. You'll be amazed how many destinies you cut short, especially of your children by your careless word. Look at you, poor. Good for nothing. I'm just wasting my money paying your school fees. And the devil said, continue, prophet, I love you. You are paying the school fees. Look at your mouth. Look at your mouth. You might as well bring them out of school because there will be no good at the end. The enemy against their destiny is not outside. It is inside. And when they pray, they never pray against their parents because they never thought their parents is a pharaoh in their life. And yet, the pharaoh is not outside. I always tell people, be careful what you speak. Are you hearing me? Be careful. You will never hear me speak negatively about my children, about my family, anywhere. Are you hearing me? Never. Never. You will never hear me speak negatively. I can rebuke you. I can correct you. But you will never hear me speak negatively about any member of my family. Never. Never. You know why? I am anointed. I am anointed. I have understood that word. Word is a destiny maker. And so, despite your mistakes, your fault, I will never look at it when I speak to you. I will still look at the word of God when I speak to you. Praise the Lord. And yet, some of you are so careless about one another. You speak all manner of evil things. And that's why your life is the way it is. Because what you speak of others is what you harvest. And then when you are called, you deny. That even brings more judgment upon you. Because if you, if you were to accept what you said and repent, God will show you mercy. And then the, the world will be canceled. But when you are asked, you will deny. And especially, leadership that denies responsibility is the, the worst form of leadership. And you destroy faith. You destroy confidence, those around you. You said something. They came to ask you. You say you didn't say it. Because you were afraid. Because of you are afraid. If you were afraid, why did you speak it? No. When you speak, you say, don't tell anybody I said so. What are you? No, you are dangerous. I'm speaking to you, even leaders. You will say something. You say, don't let pastor hear it, oh. If pastor hear it, you on your own. What are you? You are a deceiver. No, do you understand what I'm talking about? If you cannot stand what you say, then don't say it. It means that it's double tragedy. First, you know you shouldn't say it. And after you have said it, you deny it. And then the person to whom you said it, you destroy that person's confidence in you permanently. The person looks at you. You may be higher than the person. You may be senior than the person. The person looks at you. And the person says, you, you are a deceiver. 
I can trust you. And unfortunately, many people operate like that. Leaders. Leaders. Are you hearing me? No, are you hearing me? And yet, in that action, grace departs from you. Because if you destroy somebody's faith, your faith will be polluted. In your actions, in your words, you weaken somebody's faith. You destroy somebody's faith. Listen, you will soon lose yours. Because you can't have what you destroy. You can't. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12 verse 36, but I said to you, Matthew chapter 12 verse 36, Jesus said that every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Every idle word that you speak, Jesus said you will be accountable. You will be accountable in the day of judgment. It says in verse 37, Jesus said, For by your words you will be justified. And by your words you will be what? Condemned. You need to pray for mercy today. You need to ask God for mercy. Careless words has hurt many. Sense-filled word has destroyed many destinies. People run to you hoping to get comfort and peace. What did you say? He said, you, it's only when you get in trouble, you come to me. You see now, you're in trouble again, you have come. And you destroy that trust of coming to you. Whatever you say after is useless. Because at the end of the day, your first word has done the damage. It's always when you're in trouble, you run to me. You are running to me now. You are in trouble now. When I finish now, you will go again and do the same thing again. Who are you talking to? You are the devil. And somebody said, and the person said to say, it's not so, sir. It's not so, ma. I just felt I need to come. He said, now you are coming to me because you have, you have destroyed things. Hey! Hey, I pity you. I pity you. Do you know why this generation pray in vain? Do you know why this generation pray in vain? You think that God is hard of hearing. You pray about something over and over and over again. Over and over again. What is your dealing in the body of Christ? In the kingdom of the world, what is your word like? And then you come to God, you pretend that you are innocent and full of the spirit and all that. And you, you can sing the right song, you can pray the right tongue, you can pray the right prayer. And after all that, what comes out of you is poisonous. And yet the best prayer that God hears is the one you speak to one another. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I say something. Why are prayer warriors always poor? Many prayer warriors, why are they poor? No, I have seen many. I have known many. Why are many prayer warriors poor? The calling of God is beyond prayer. The calling of God is beyond fasting. The calling of God is in the livability of the calling. And I said to you, believability and livability goes together. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I pray that today some of you will rethink again. Rethink again. December 5th, from the daily dose of spiritual vitamin, it says, Mene, mene, take care of fasting. And he said, one day you'll be put on this scale. What will be your result? No, what will be your result? Mene, mene, take care of fasting. One day you'll be weighed on the scale of Jehovah. And you can be weighed tomorrow. You can weigh it even tonight. You can be weighed to that tonight. Have you ever thought about it? That one day the Lord will place you on a scale. He said to Cornelius, your prayer your arms giving has come today to be put on the scale and God has answered positively and therefore God has sent an angel to you. If you are put on the scale, what will be the result? No, what will be the result? Think about it. Shout hallelujah. Please. Please. Please.
place. Reconsider your words. Don't just hear this message and go again. Hear it and come to the altar at your own time and speak to the Lord. One thing you can do, the good thing about words is because the devil programs it and keep it for the day of manifestation. What God does is that when you repent and come before God, you can take them back and abolish it and wipe it off from the computer of the devil. The devil is a long, long time investor. He keeps the word waiting for you. Waiting for you. Because the devil knows that seed time and harvest shall not cease. And so he plants the word. He stole it. But when you come before the Lord, the Lord said he will wipe away all our unrighteousness. He will cleanse it. When you come before the Lord and repent, the Lord goes into the record and wipe it off. And you, you said, in the name of Jesus Christ, all the words that the devil has programmed against my destiny and against my children and against those I love, I take it back and I clean it off in the name of Jesus Christ. And God will do the same. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. In this kingdom, the word rules supreme. In this kingdom, the word is king. In this kingdom, the word is all matters. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say the word matters. Say the word is king. In the kingdom of his word. <laughs> his word is king. Everything is sustained by the power of the word. And so your life is sustained by the power of your word. Your life is destroyed by the power of your word. Your life is afflicted by the power of your word. The Bible said anybody that opens the edge, the serpent will bite. With your word, you open it and let the devil in. Job said the things I feared has come upon me. And so Job opened the door for the enemy to come in. Shout hallelujah. Rise on your feet. I'm not asking anybody to do anything this night. But I'm asking you, the word you have heard, don't forget it. Don't forget it. Take opportunity, come to the altar today. Or wherever you are, bow your knees today, tonight, and do something. Do you know that many have lost valued relationship because they couldn't build up love with word. Their word was always like an arrow destroying no, their word. They are so mature, they cannot speak simple, graceful word. They are too big to speak gracious word. They, they think that arrogant word is equal to manhood. No, 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 no. Arrogant word is equal to emptiness. If you are, oh, today is Wednesday, we're going for evangelism. No, don't let me go deeper. Don't let me go deeper. Praise the Lord. Do you know your word brings rejection upon you? Nobody wants to do business with an arrogant person. No! Go and check out. Go and check out. I am this. I am that. I am this. I am this. And they look at you. They say, please, I am that I am. Go. <laughs> do you know who I am? And the person is listening to you. I read a story about a journalist. He sat in the business class. And another man sat in the business class and they were chatting. And they chatted throughout the duration of the flight when they got to the destination. And the journalist was just like, I'm a journalist. I am this, I am this, I am this. And, <clears throat> and as he finished, and he asked the man, who are you? And the man said, um, I am so, so, so. He said, yeah, but where do you work? He said, I'm the chairman of Tata Group worldwide. The man walked away. He said, you mean I sat beside the chairman of Tata Group? Tata is a group of industries from India. They are into steel. They are into car. They are into, name it, they are into it. And the man said, he said the man was just wearing T-shirt and sandals. And then, very simple. And I said, I am a chairman of uh, Tata Group. And he walked away. And he said, hey, what a stupid mistake I've made. I'm busy telling him who I am when I could have learned something from who he is. And that is what happens. 
Your arrogance shuts up divine wisdom away from you. They won't share it with you. They won't give it to you. Praise the Lord. No. You are too big to learn from them. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, have mercy. Today, Lord, help me to become careful, to become mindful of my words from today. In Jesus' mighty name, let my word build love. Let my word build businesses and enterprise. Let my word build encouragement. Let my word give hope and peace to my hearers. Let my words bring glory to your holy name. From today onwards, in Jesus' mighty name, shout hallelujah.